Hey everybody, today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a subsequent nav element within a scrollable UI. So you may have seen these before, they're kind of common within uh, so like contact apps, email apps, um, and they're, they're typically within apps that have multiple layers of data. So you'll have a high level of uh, information, those like contacts, and then you'll have contacts that fall within like A names, B names, C names. That's what we're going to do in here. So we're actually going to be replicating the Android Lollipops uh, contacts app and replicate the, uh, the way that the letters move uh, within that scroll. So let's get started. So I'm building this on an iPhone 6 camera size. Uh, you might be thinking, Jared, what are you doing building an Android app on an iPhone 6 canvas? Well, I don't have an Android phone, I have an iPhone, so uh, this is what I'm going to have to build it on. It doesn't change the way that you build this, so just build it on an iPhone 6, the device will scale, or the, the prototype will scale to your device. Uh, and the way that we're building this works for whatever phone you're using, so if you're building this with your own UI, it should work uh, the same way. So go ahead and set that. And then the first thing we're going to do, once we've got that set, is we're going to come in here and we're going to drop in some of our assets. Now I've got my assets already placed in, you should place yours. If you haven't done that, you can go download them off my website. There's a link in the description for that. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab the header, place that in, and then I'm going to grab the nav bar and drop that at the bottom. And then I can come into the layers panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a container for the scroller. So I'm going to click on New Layer, just kind of expand this out, I'm going to drag this down, I'm going to make sure that this is actually at 82 pixels down, and I want to make sure that it's 535 pixels tall, that's what it needs to be. Uh, we'll rename this to Scroll, and while I'm in here, I'm going to make the background white. You can make it white or transparent, doesn't matter. Um, either way, the background will turn white, so uh, we just want to make sure that it's white. And then let's make sure that this is the bottom layer here. So we'll just drag a uh, nav bar and header and the layers panel above the scroll, and we're good. So let's add the scroll interaction before we do anything else. Come down here to interactions panel, add that scroll interaction. Then we can come back into our layers, go over here and grab contacts, and drop this in. Now for my contacts, I want these to be 75 pixels in and 18 pixels down within the scroll container. So I'm going to go back into the layers, make sure that I drag that into the scroll container, and put this 18 pixels down. So now I've got a scroll container with my contacts in here. That works just fine. And now we can go back into the layers panel, or the assets panel. And we can start dropping in these uh, these nav indicators. So first what we'll do, I'm going to grab the star. I'm just going to roughly place this in. We'll just roughly place all of these. So we'll grab the star. I'll come in here and grab A, B, C, and D. And then we'll place these appropriately. So before we start placing these, let's go ahead and put these inside of the scroll container. I'm going to put these in order of appearance, so star on top, then A, B, C, and D. It's just a little bit easier if we do it that way. And let's make sure we get these in the right spot. So the star is actually going to be 17 pixels in and 28 pixels down. And since we got these kind of placed generally, we'll just read off the coordinates for the rest of these. Um, the star is 17 pixels in because it's a little wider, but the rest of these are going to be 20 pixels in. So for A, I want it to be 20 in, 339 pixels down. For B, we'll make that 20, and 646 pixels down. For C, 20 in. 954 pixels down. And then for D, 
make this 20 in and 1260 pixels down. Great, so now if I scroll, we can see that these hang on to the appropriate places. They should be within our contacts. Awesome. So now in order to get these assets to stay in their spot, we're actually gonna use a move animation. Now this seems counterintuitive, you know, like we're making something stay in place, why would we use a move animation? Well, the reason we're gonna do that is that since we have a scroll container, uh, everything within that scroll container is moving up or down. It's, it's moving uh, vertically based off of our thumb. So if I add a move animation to tell it to move the opposite direction based off where I'm scrolling, it'll essentially stay in its place. And that's the, the key part of making these things uh, work. So we'll just come in here. I'm going to add a move animation to the star, and then A, B, and C. We're not going to add one to D because, well, we're not going to build past D. So there's really no purpose. There's really no reason to do that. So once we've got that in here, what I want these to do is be based off of the scroll and scroll position. And I'm going to say move continuously with rate. Then we're going to limit the scroll range because what we're going to do is say when I'm scrolling between this area and this area, I want you to not move. And then once I'm outside of these bounds, then you can start to move again or, or not move. I want to turn that move animation off. So with the star, it's a little bit different. Um, since the star is stop, starting at the top, although the, the contents of this scroll are further down, 100, 100 something pixels down, um, what's actually happening is the scroll is starting at zero. So the top here of Patrick Keenan, right up here, this is actually our zero point. And where the star is, this is at its, its zero point. So I wanna say that I don't want this to start, or I want this to begin at zero. And then what I need to do is from here, just kind of play around and figure out how many pixels uh, it takes before I want this to start moving again. So just kind of a rough guess, let me say 200. Uh, you just kind of got to play around and figure this out. So once I got 200 set, try to drag, and see there it starts to move. Now that's a little too high, so I'm gonna to have to adjust this. Let's say 225. Okay, that's closer. Let's try 235. I'll pull this up. That's pretty good. I'm gonna say maybe let's remove a couple, couple of pixels. Let's say 233 for this. Add one more. Since we're actually working at double pixel density, uh, one pixel actually equals two. And it's a minor detail, but it's a noticeable difference. So there, 234 looks pretty good. It's perfect. So we'll keep that in mind, 234, because what I need to do now is come into A and tell it to move based off the scroll position and continuously with rate. And when I start its scroll range, it's going to be a little bit past this 234. Now the reason for that is because between here and here, there's a little, little bit of an extra gap. So we need to account for that. So let's say maybe it's 300. Pull this in. Let's see if it stops at 300. That looks pretty good. But you know what? I actually don't know if this is correct. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a guide. Now the way I'm going to add a guide is just a, a random layer. I'm just click a new layer, make it in here. And so now the bottom of this uh, rectangle is on top of the square. So this is gonna be my guide for knowing whether or not my assets are moving in the right spot. I'm gonna pull it and make sure it's not within the uh, scroll layer so it doesn't move. So I can see the A is actually a little too low. Let's try 310. Pretty 
Very close. Straight through 12. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So where do I want it to end? Well, I'm going to add that 234. So let's say this is about mm, 4 uh, or 550. It's, kind of, it's just a general, general thing. So we got this moving. Once I get to about 550, does this start to move in the middle? Yeah, that's pretty close. Just to be safe, I'm going to make this 549. So we want this one to move A between 312 and 539. That's perfect. Okay, let's come over to B. Say this moves based off scroll. Scroll position continuously with rate. Let's limit that scroll range. We need to add that 234 pixels, so let's say this is about 620, something like that. And this is for C, so, or B. So there we go, yeah, that's pretty close. Remove a pixel with two, so let's say 619. Yeah, there we go. And then let's add, let's say maybe 850 here, that should probably be pretty good close. So we'll pull this up. So right where Brie Lemon is, it should pull up. Maybe a little bit lower. That doesn't look quite right. It's 856. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. And then for the last one, we'll do C. Set its movement based off scroll and scroll position. Continuously with rate. I'm going to set this at 926. Probably going to be about 1160 for the ending here. Make sure this works well. Yep, that's pretty good. Forward, and that pulls up just right. Awesome. So now we've got our nabs working. Yeah, they're working appropriately, just how we want it. So I can scroll this up, scroll down. They work fast, it's beautiful. Uh, so we can delete this guide. And now, we just got a couple of small details. So we can come in here, go back into our layers. Let's drag our track in here. It's a very big layer, it's <laughs> meant to go. It's right about here. You can put this anywhere you want, just to the side. I got it at 351. I want to make sure that this is the last, or beneath the uh, header and nav bar. I can grab the knob layer and place this right on top. I'm just going to place this randomly, or not uh, generally, above here. Great. I'm going to place this right above the track, but below the header. I'm going to add a move animation to this. Same thing, I'm going to say based off the scrolls, scroll position, it's going to move continuously with rate. And I can say one and have it move down, but it's going to go all the way down just based off my scroll. What I'm going to do is actually change this rate to point one. We're pretending this is a very long contact sap. We don't want it to move down the entire way just because we're only going to D. So just have it move like kind of like that, a point one. That's pretty good. Let's try that again. There we go. So that's it for this tutorial. All we did was add some move animations to a couple of different elements, essentially keep them in place based off of the scroll animation, and was able to create these nav's fairly simply. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.